Hey gang, this is Mike with my Real Estate Dojo. Give me a second, I gotta get my calculator real quick. All right guys, I am back. And what I'm gonna show you right now is what has got me super duper interested in real estate investing again. You know, I've been a professional landlord for about eight, nine years and you know, has, has anybody been a landlord before? They know all the headaches of being a landlord, guys. Now, I'm not knocking being a landlord. I love being a landlord, but damn, you know, it, it sure does uh, well on you. Uh, from going to evictions, to, you know, screening out tenants, to hearing their sad stories, and so on and so on, guys. Um, but what has got me really, really interested is Air, Airbnb investing, guys. Uh, and I want to share this secret with you because it really, really, really has got me pumped up. And I know it's a great way to make a lot of money in Airbnb. And I want to share it with, with you guys. So if you guys are a buy and hold guy like me, you know, you buy and hold. Or if you're a fix and flipper, you might want to listen up. Or if you're a wholesaler, you might want to less, listen up. And if you're just an average person that owns your own home, now what I'm going to show you is and your ability to be able to become a real estate investor and cash out on the profits that I'm going to share with you. So it doesn't matter if you're on your own home, you're a professional investor, you're buying buy and hold guy, you're not a hold, buy and hold guy, you're a fix and flipper, you're a wholesaler. What I'm going to show you may change your mindset about Airbnb and being a professional landlord. Alright guys, uh, now there's many different benefits of owning a rental property and renting out their Airbnb, but the very first one, what I want to talk about is called massive, 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 massive cash flow, okay? And so what I'm going to do is share with you one of my properties that I've owned in Grand Prairie for like six, seven years, and I rented it out, okay? Now, in that same zip code in Grand Prairie, I owned multiple properties, so I was able to control the rental and bring the property values up in that area. Um, you know, the property that I rented out in Grand Prairie was a four-bedroom uh, house. It had two stories. It had a game room. It had a pool. Uh, it had a huge backyard. It was roughly about almost 4,000 square foot if you include the garage. And again, that property could have rented out right around like 16, 1700 bucks. Because I'm a professional landlord, I know how to maximize my cash flow. I rented out that property for $2,000 a month and I rented that out for quite a while, guys. Um, so my mortgage on that property, uh, because I bought it subject to where I didn't have to use my own credit, I didn't have to get a loan, I didn't have to do any of that crap that most people do, okay? Or didn't have to go to auction and bid. Uh, I gotta be a owner financing. My, roughly my monthly payments were like roughly about 1,300 bucks. So I was making like $700 plus monthly cash flow. But that was the old way of doing it, okay? But my new way, I'm gonna make three times, four times that, and that's why I'm so excited about coming back to the game and buying properties and renting them on Airbnb, and I want to share that with you guys, okay? Um, so if you have a deal, hit me up, guys. I am buying in all 50 states. Um, if you have a rental property, I don't want any war zones, but if you have a property, send me up. I'm, I'm ready to buy them, okay? Uh, if you're a cash buyer, hit me up. If you're a wholesaler, hit me up. But let me run through the numbers. One of the main reasons why I'm getting so pumped up about Airbnb investing, okay? So here's here's a couple of numbers that I did for you guys. I don't know if you can see. This is the four bedroom house that I had in Grand Prairie that I had leased out for a very, very long time. I rented it out for $2,000 a month. It was a four bedroom. It had, it had a pool, it had a game room. I mean, it was the shit, okay? And remember, I'm in, uh, this is Dallas, Texas. It's not California or anything like that. So for the, for, for the people that are in California, this might be really, really cheap, okay? So I rented out for $2,000. So my idea is that if you rent that same house, if I had rented that same exact house on Airbnb, and I've only rented it out 15 days out of the month. So assuming that there's 30 days out of the month, I would only work the house 50 times, 50%. So out of the 30 days, I would only rent it out 15 
the other 15 uh, is just vacant, just sitting there, okay? That same house has four bedrooms. And if I would rent it out at $50 per night, okay? So if I would rent it out at $50, I don't know if you guys can see this. If I would rent it out at $50 a night per room for 15 days, okay? Uh, rent out. It would come out to $750 per night, okay? And, but that's only one bedroom. Now, if I do $750 per night times four bedrooms, I am making a whopping $3,000. So let me back up, guys. I don't think you understood what I just said. I rent that, the, I, I rent that same exact house for two grand, okay? But now with this new strategy, I rent out the same exact house only half the time. So I did 30 days, 15 days, it's not doing shit, it's just empty, okay? And I rent the house, each room for 50 bucks. On, per night, dude, that's it. I mean, very fucking cheap, like the price of a Motel 6, even cheaper than most Motel 6, okay? And by me doing that, by me only renting out for 50 bucks per night, and renting out only for 15 days out of the month, I am making a whopping $3,000 versus a 2000 But hold up, hold up, guys and ladies. I just told you this house was a top of the line house. It had a game room, it had pool, it had upstairs, downstairs, it was four bedrooms, and it was a very nice part of town. So, I would rent the rooms more than 50 bucks. You know, does that make sense? I would rent it for 80 bucks, okay? At the very minimum, I would rent it for a lot more, but I want to be competitive, okay? With the hotel, so I would rent it for 80 bucks. Now watch what happens, ladies and gentlemen, okay? If I rent that same exact house, Okay, with the four bedrooms for 80 bucks, a, okay, 80 bucks a night. Um, and again, I just rent the, the rooms out for 15 days out of, the, out of the month. So 15 days. So 15 days times 80 bucks, it comes to $1,200 for 15 days. So again, $80 times 15 days that somebody's going to be in there, I'm going to make $1,200 for one bedroom. Now, I got three bedrooms, remember? So if I times that 1,000 times four bedrooms, now see what happens, guys. I go and make $4,800, okay? $800, okay? So, so watch what happens. If I just raise it from 50 bucks to 80 bucks, how much I increase my profits from three thousand to four thousand. Now what? Now watch what happens here. I was making three and forty eight hundred, but when I was renting it out, I was only getting two thousand dollars, guys. Okay, and ladies. So by me coming with this new way of doing business, you can see that I'm gonna make shitload more money. Now here's here's the catch, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you understand what I'm saying. This house is only being rented out fifteen days out of the month. The other fifteen days. It's fucking empty. And the reason I did it this way is just to show you worst case scenario that, you know, out of the 15 days, I'm only, rent out of the 30 days out of the month, I'm only renting it out five times. Like, I suck, dude. But Airbnb gets you a significant amount of traffic, okay? Does that make sense? So I'm giving you the worst case scenario possibility to make sure it looks good. But what if you were renting it out 20 days? What if you were renting it out 28 days? What if you were, instead of charging 80 bucks, you were charging 100 bucks? What if you were charging 125 bucks, okay? So as you can see, Airbnb rental is a massive, 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 massive cash flow uh, cow for people like myself or maybe you guys, okay? Now, this strategy works no matter if you're a first time investor. So let's say you're not an investor but you wanna be an investor and you don't have money, you don't have credit, or you, or you don't wanna risk it, but you have your own house, okay? So what you can do is just start off with experimenting renting that one extra room out, okay? That's how you get into the game of being a real estate investor. Now guys, there's a risk with everything, the guy could be a murderer, so you know, you know, you use your fucking brain, but you know what I'm saying? If you're a risk taker, like entrepreneur, which is a risk taker, then this might be an option for you, where if you don't have any money, and you don't wanna you know, invest all this money to buy a property, get in debt, whatever, if you have your own personal house, why don't you, if you have an extra room, why don't you rent that room out, like what I just said, and see how the business works, and then build your confidence, build your success, and then maybe go out there and get your own deal. And instead of paying cash or hard money like my last video where I said, you know, 
X many different ways to find funding for your next deal. One of the best ways is to use subject to and get that properties via owner financing, but that's a different story, guys. So the, one of the major points of Airbnb rental is you have massive, 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 massive cash cow. But that's not the good point, okay? There's so much more good point. Let's go to number two. Um, number two is that when I was a landlord, and I had the same exact property, four bedrooms that I rented for $2,000 a month. What would happen is sometimes I would get fucking deadbeat renters that didn't pay their fucking rent. And so for that one month, the one, one and a half month, I wasn't getting rent. I had to go pay for an eviction. I had to pay the court fees, the constable to go serve them their letter. And then once I got the eviction done, then I had to go and you know pay the vacancy, the holding fees re advertise hire a realtor, pay them their fucking 25%, you know, etc. Rehab the property, clean it up ex over and over, okay? Uh, which, which meant that that one single residential property was not like an apartment or it wasn't like an, like a hotel. If that one fucking renter stopped paying, the whole machine would just stop, okay? I wouldn't, ha I wouldn't go anywhere, okay? So I solved that fucking ranch and took it out of that machine and then I could get it going, okay? So that's one of the biggest risks of owning single residential homes is that if you get a vacancy or if you get a deadbeat renter in there, your machine clogs up and you're not having any more cash flow coming in and that's it. And if you have a mortgage on the property, you gotta still be paying that fucking liability, okay? So which hurts you a lot. But this way, what I'm talking about with Airbnb, your one single residential home now becomes a multi-unit property. Why? Because you have four rooms. So let's say if one room is vacant and the other three are working, see, you're making money, just like an apartment, dude. The reason apartment complexes have such an easier success rate than let's say an investor that has 10 properties or an investor that has 100 properties is because A, the properties are everywhere, and in, in the beginning phase, the, the threshold phase, if let's say the guy has 10 properties and if one or two don't pay, then he has mortgage on all of them, then it's gonna be hard for him to pay. But if he have a 100 unit apartment complex and five of them don't pay or five of them are empty, the other units are supplementing the income. And so what I've just done is maneuver this one residential uh, home where if you have a renter that they don't pay, you're fucked, you don't get any more money. What you've just done is maneuvered it and turned that residential home into a four unit property. In the case of my house, I have a four bedroom. But if your house is a three bedroom, then it's a three bedroom unit. And if in my case, if one unit was not working, the other three units will be working and producing money, okay? So that is a, such a big advantage shift point from having a single residential home where if the renter doesn't pay you, you're all fucked and there's no money coming in to you do the eviction, to you clean it up, to you remarket it. Where with this Airbnb, not only do you get massive cash flow, but you turn your single residential home into a multi-unit income producing function, if that makes any sense, guys, okay? Which is very, very powerful. Now, the next idea, which, is, which, which I think is the most important, why I love Airbnb, and, and that's why I'm getting so motivated, and I'm willing to buy properties all over America, so if you have some, send it to me, is that the mindset is so different. Uh, when I put a renter in there, sometimes they're fucking deadbeats, dude. You know what I'm saying? And, and Or sometimes they're good people. They lose their jobs or something happens, right? So they can foresee it and control it, and I can foresee it and control it. But what happens is my machine is running, my rental house is running, and then that one person doesn't pay, and then I get a clock, and I don't go anywhere, dude. So I evict that motherfucker, rehab it, put it back on the market, pay the realtor, so on, okay? Um, so with Airbnb audience, the mindset is totally different. These people are on vacation, dude. You know what I'm saying? Um, they came to Florida. If you look, for example, you have a house in Miami Beach, they came to Florida, they, they, they came to go to a touristy place, or they came to Colorado, or they went to Denver, or they went to Dallas. They're just going, they're just different mindset. They're there for three days, they may be there for a week, but they're out there shopping, they're out there going sightseeing. So, you know, 
they're, they're not sitting here trying to you know have a job and pay. They already have money. They're on vacation, and they just need a place to stay. So the mindset is different, and you don't have to deal with all the baggages that come with being a landlord. Like, hey, I lost my job, or you know, my wife left me, or whatever the fucking story they may give you. Okay, where in the Airbnb audience. They're on vacation, they're on business trips, so this is not their permanent home. They're just thankful to have that, okay? Which just makes it a mind shift different, which you're not, instead of dealing with deadbeat ten tenants that think you own some shit, you're not dealing with people that are saying, hey, thank you so much for allowing us to use your house, or for allowing us to have our vacation, or you know, ha or have us have our wedding, or have us go to Disney World. So it's a very positive thing where the other one, being a landlord, is like, most people don't like landlords. They're thinking you're making all the fucking money, guys, okay? Um, so that is another point, which is the mind shift, okay? And... Now I've talked about massive cash flow by renting Airbnbs. I talked about how you turn a single residential home with one way of making income into a multi-unit way of making an income just like a hotel or an apartment, guys. Okay, uh, And I've talked about the mindset different of being a landlord, dealing with deadbeat renters versus dealing with people on vacation or people on business trips and you know they're not even in the properties majority of the times they're out there visiting okay now I'm not saying it's always gonna be like that guys you know you know you guys know if you drive from point A to point B you can get it get in the wreck that guy so business entrepreneurship is a, is a risk if you think there's not you're a fucking idiot okay I, I don't know what to say so I'm not saying there's not a risk I'm saying the risk is so much less because you're dealing with different types of mindset people versus land uh, being a landlord and dealing with deadbeat tenants okay all right, the next great thing about being a you know being an Airbnb landlord versus being um, a professional landlord is that the laws are different. For example, um, the Airbnb is more like a hotel. Okay, you're not leasing it to them, so if they don't pay, you could easily call the police and have them eject them out because they don't have nothing that says, "Look, I'm leasing this thing." Where in a rental situation, they have a lease, they have a year lease, or that you know, so it's, it's, you have to go take them to court, you got to take them to eviction, you got to pay the constable, you got to wait all those time for the court date, you got to go in the front of the judge, you know, that deadbeat vendor could be a you know, uh, professional squatter, they know how to do appeal. Now, you got to pay an attorney, you got to you know, you got to wait, and then you know, so with, with these, again, first of all, with the Airbnb, they don't have those mindset majority because they're on vacation or doing work. And then two, they don't have a contract in the sense of, hey, I have a lease in here. They're just like, hey, I'm in a hotel, I paid for two days, and hey, you haven't paid, get out. If they don't wanna get out, you can call the police, dude. So you don't have to take them to, to an eviction court per se because they don't have a lease with you, okay? Which is very, very powerful, okay? And the other thing to think about is that whenever you go to the court system, I'm a professional landlord, I, I evicted, you know, thousands of, I don't want to say thousands, but I have thousands of dollars in people that owe me in evictions from um, judgments that I've got from them. Uh, and I can tell you, it's not any fun, man. You know, you, you got to pay for the fucking course. You got to pay for the fucking constable. You got to pay for the holding fees. You got to pay for the rehab. You got to pay for the realtor to remarket it. I mean, it's just not fun, okay? And the laws where I was going with that is, in Texas at least, is very favorable to the to the tenants. So if you're the landlord, the judge, if you don't have everything you know dotted and crossed, the judge is gonna favor the tenants. And I can give you a couple of examples. You know, if you're doing an eviction around Thanksgiving, Christmas, the, the judge is gonna, you're gonna get in front of the judge, you're gonna tell him, and he's gonna tell you, dude, hey, it's the holidays, you know, and he's gonna favor with, with the tenant and postpone the, you know, that has happened to me multiple times. Or, you know, you're gonna go in there and the tenant knows what to do and they just prolong the process. So instead of getting them out in the first month, you may be in there two months. And now you gotta pay two months of landlording. So with Airbnb, again, the mindset is different. They're on vacation or they're on job. And they're more happier. This is not their permanent home. And they're just grateful, okay? And the laws are more favorable for the landlord in this situation versus being a professional landlord, okay? Excuse me, guys and ladies. All right. The next reason 
why I like Airbnb customers more than uh, being a professional landlord is that there's less traffic. Okay, so like let's say I, you know I have a house in Florida and people are coming out there to go to uh, some kind of fair or some kind of Disney World, whatever, right? And so when they rent for me for a week and they bring their fucking family or, or two, they're not sitting at the house, dude. They didn't come from Texas to Florida to sit there and watch TV and go back and forth and back and forth in my carpets. They didn't come to do that. They just came with their kids to take them out and they're probably like out all day and they come home so fucking tired that the kids are already sleeping. They're just sleeping. So there's less chance of them crashing or tearing up my property or tearing up my carpet where somebody living in that property, they're going back and forth so many times and, and using the property, okay? Where I guess less wear and tear with um, their Airbnb. And as I talked about earlier, if I only use the property half, so if there's 30 days and I only rent it out 15 days, I already make so much more money than if I just rent it out to those couple for you know $2,000. And therefore, I'm already getting less wear and tear because I'm using the property 50% less. I'm making at least two times more and more money. And at the same time, the people that I've rented to that I'm using that 50% are not really using the home because they're out there on business or they're out there on their fucking trip vacationing and they're just using the property to crash out. You know what I mean? So there's less wear and tear on the property, guys. All right. Um, the other advantage I like about renting the property is I get all the tax benefits, okay? I get all the depreciation, the, the interest right off if I have a loan on the property, uh, and I get the appreciation, you know? So th there's a lot of different benefits of owning the property. So that's why I don't like fixing and flipping, I don't like wholesaling, because the real money is made in buying and holding, guys, getting massive cash flow. And before I used to get cash flow, where I thought, you know, $500, $700 was great, but what I just showed you right now, the same exact property where I used to rent for a uh, four bedroom, okay? I used to rent out a four bedroom house um, in Grand Prairie. And I used to get, it had a pool, it had a, you know, upstairs, downstairs, a game room, I used to get $2,000 for it. And if I rent the same exact house out, you know, for 80 bucks a night, and I rent out for 15 nights, it comes to $1,200 a night times four rooms, I'm getting 4,800, as you can see, using the property half the time. And if I rent it at, at 50 bucks a night, you know, uh, only 15 nights out of the 30, I'm making 3,000, well, I'm making a whopping $1,000 more using the property 50% less, guys and ladies. So, as you can see, guys, you know, uh, being an Airbnb landlord is is a new gold rush, okay? Um, and I'm taking advantage of it. So, guys, if you're a wholesaler and you have a property in anywhere in America, hit me up, dude. I'm very interested, okay? If you're a cash buyer, reach out to me. I have so many wholesalers that have deals and they're looking for cash buyers. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to connect you guys. So, reach out to me. Uh, go out there and hustle and bustle. Don't take no for answer. And... Make your dreams come true. See you, gang.